So today we're going to be doing a little addition um, using base 10 blocks. Now today's addition is not going to be with regrouping, so no regrouping. So I have a couple of things out. I have my base 10 blocks, my flats, my rods, my units. Um, I have uh, a ruler. I have a base 10 chart. And the base 10 chart, this one I actually purchased from Lakeshore Learning. Um, but you can actually buy it online. You, pr uh, you can print it online, do a search for it, find it online, or you can just um, use construction paper, a piece of paper, draw and write it out. And I have my units, my rods, and my flats, and the accompanying pictures. I also have a ruler, and I have a blank piece of laminated uh, paper, which I'll be using to uh, write some addition problems down. I also have a little dry erase marker. Now, the first thing I want to make sure with, with uh, children is, uh, or students and students is to make sure that um, they understand the concepts behind the base 10 blocks. For example, um, this is, I, I don't introduce the addition right away. Um, I allow a, a few weeks for kids to kind of get used to um, the mechanics of base 10 blocks. and give them time, enough time to explore. So at this point, you know, um, kids should should uh, be able to recognize this because they've had time to explore. They've, ha they've had other, other experiences with base 10 blocks. And they'll look at this and they'll say, well, this is two rods and three units. This number is tw the number 23. Or if I were to add a flat in there, they would be able to, to tell me that if this is one flat, again, this is two rods and three units, this number is 123. So once we're certain that our, um, that our students or children are aware of, that, uh, are aware of some, of some of those basics, the next thing what we're going to do with this is we're going to do a little addition problem with no regrouping. Uh, what I like to do is I like to make kind of two different lines because we're using, if we're adding two different sums, let's see, just a little dotted line. One will separate between the two sums. So one of the sums will go here and one of the sums will go here. Actually, this is going to be our sum summation line. So we're going to introduce a problem for our students. We are going to say, we'll start something small. We're going to do something, something as simple as 3 plus 2 equals. Put this back up here. So, um, what we'll, we'll model to children is, the first thing we're going to do is for the number 3, that's our first number, we're going to put it on top, that's our number 3, we're going to write the number 3, and then our second number is the number 2, we're going to take 2 units, number 2, and now what we're going to do is we're going to add these together. And how we add this together is we take all the units from the bottom or um, whatever we're adding from the bottom, we bring it to the top. So we have three on top. And we're going to bring everything from the bottom to the top. So four, five. What we'll do is we'll erase this over here. We already know that, that that's not the, the number. And we'll put 5 down here. So 3 plus 2 equals 5. So once um, students have seen some of the mechanics and exactly what we do, and we give them a little practice with it. So they're taking a couple, so they're, so they're, um, they're getting used to like how to use 
the, the base 10 chart and the process of bringing up uh, the units from the bottom to the top and they know that they're going to bring up the units and count so 4, 5 or if it's um, 5, 5 plus 3 what we'll have them do is we'll, put, we'll have them again put the 5 units on top 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 plus 3 I like to have students write out the numbers. So 5 plus 3. So when we're starting, we're going to start bringing all the units from the bottom to the top. So we have 5 on top. So we have 6, 7, 8. So we're going to cross these numbers out. And we're going to bring down our answer over here. So we have 8 units all together. Now for a larger number, we'll do the same thing as we did with the units. We'll take you can actually also make your base 10 chart a little bigger. I have bigger base 10 charts, but I didn't have them readily available. So now what we have is we have two different numbers here. And the first thing I like to have um, my kids do is write out each of the numbers. So if, if you have a larger base 10 chart, it, it won't look as um, cramped as this. So I suggest um, a larger base 10 chart if you, if you have one or if you can make one. So they will start with the number on top, and that's one number. And we have one flat four rods and three units. So the number on top is 143. Now the number on the bottom is I'll actually do it on the side so I have some room. Is one flat, two rods, and two units. So 122. So what we're going to do is um, just as we did before and again we're always starting from the ones column. So that's another thing you want to introduce to students that when we do addition we always start the, uh, at the units column and we go to the next. Then we finish the rods and go to the next which is the flat. But we always start in the units column. So again starting with our, with our basic rule we're going to um, add from the unit column, starting from the bottom. So we have 3 on top, we have 2 on the bottom. So 3 plus 2, 4, 5. Put 5 down here. Now, now we move to our next column, which is our rods. And we have 4 on top and, f and 2 on the bottom. So we're going to add 2 from the bottom. So 5, 6. Cross these out. And now we're going to um, work on our last column, which is flats. So we have one flat on top and one flat on the bottom. We're going to take our flat on the bottom, add it to the top. So we have two flats. Now cross out these old numbers. And our answer. Uh, 143 plus 122 is two flats, six rods, and five units, or the number 265.